It's a ruddy cab. As you can see, I'm uh, at this uh, beautiful Iraq resort here in uh, Almanau in Prachup Kirikan. And I'm here today and I'm going to be interviewing a famous YouTuber, me, to find out a little bit about his life before he came to Thailand and his plans for the future. So let me introduce you to Jed from Thailand, my land, retiring disgracefully. So how do cab Jed? First up, I heard that you'd had a bad motorbike accident. How's your recovery coming along? Ah, so what do you cab? Thanks for taking the uh, time to interview me for your channel. It's been a long, slow road to recovery, I'm afraid. Uh, I think it's because of my age. Broken bones don't heal so well as they did when I was a, a young lad and falling out of trees and off swings. Uh, the doctor at the uh, Wahin Hospital reckons it's going to be a while yet. So I still can't ride my motorbike far to show you this beautiful country, but hopefully it won't be too much longer now. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself and your life and how you, you managed to end up uh, in Thailand. Well, I was born in uh, Bedford in England and uh, at a very early age when I was about three or four, my father got a job in Jamaica. He was a foreman steel erector. Uh, in London and uh, the company was working for Higgs and Hill they got a contract to build a government building in uh, Kingston in Jamaica so um, he took the job and uh, we all went with him and we spent about 18 months over there in Jamaica and I think that uh, that got me with the uh, oh it's so windy up here I hope you can hear me and that got the travel bug uh, where I wanted to travel I think that was uh, instilled in me from those days and uh, ever since then I've been traveling uh, the world but uh, after about 18 months um, the job was completed and my father took us all back to the UK to London and he had a fallout with this company he was working for a company called Higgs and Hill and uh, he decided that uh, he'd had enough of steel erecting anyway and he decided to go back to his hometown of Middlesbrough in the northeast of England and uh, he had family there, lots of brothers, he had nine brothers and two sisters, a big family. They, most of them worked on the docks. Nepotism, he got a job straight away with, uh, with working on the docks with his brothers and uh, he got a job as a stevedore. So, we lived there right the way through my schooling. I lived there all the way, uh, right the way till I left school. And when I left school, I decided that I wanted to leave Middlesbrough. Nothing wrong with it. It was a great town in those days. Not so much now from what I see in the newspapers, uh, but in those days, I, it was great to grow up there. I decided that I wanted to go back to somewhere like Jamaica. To do that, I needed a good job. So I decided to train as a chef. I thought, well, tourism that's where people go places like Jamaica uh, Antigua Barbados um, there's lots of hotels and restaurants so I thought oh, I'll train as a chef and then I can try and get a job overseas and uh, that's what I did I trained as a chef and uh, once I had the experience I applied for a job in Bermuda and I got a job there as a chef de party and uh, I stayed there for two years with my fiance at the time, Colleen, who later become my wife for 46 years and uh, we were together for 50. Um, after a couple of years in Bermuda, we'd more or less seen it all and done it all on a small island. So um, we decided to go back to the UK and give it a try. But after a month of being there, we knew that it wasn't for us. So we started looking for another country to move to and uh, work in. And at that time, uh, Australia uh, was taking uh, people from the UK without having to have a visa uh, because it was a Commonwealth country and the, the country was not very well populated. A massive country with not many people. So they were trying to get the population up. So that was one way of doing it. If you were British, you could uh, fly into the country and get a permanent residency. And that's what we did. And uh, we were there uh, right the way through until uh, I retired at 2017. And in that time, we had four children and later five grandchildren. And I worked uh, mainly hotels. And I didn't 
didn't like that very much. It was all split shifts and long hours with very little money in those days. And uh, I decided that I'd try and get some work overseas from there. And that's uh, what happened. I got a job in 1982 uh, in uh, the Falkland Islands after the war with Argentina. They were rebuilding the airport after bombing and rebuilding the roads after bombing. And uh, I got a job on a construction site as a chef manager. Uh, after that I got a job in Papua New Guinea in a gold mine, same thing, chef manager. And uh, I ended up going back to Australia because I was spending too much time away from my family. But I still didn't want to work hotels. So I decided to get my Siemens ticket and I um, did that. And then I could work on oil rigs and do five weeks on, five weeks off, or rig tenders and do five weeks on, five weeks off. Things like that, which was a lot better sociable hours uh, to be with my family and uh, once I got my ticket my first job was on uh, a, a ship that went down to the Antarctic the Aurora Australis and uh, it took expeditionists down and restocked uh, their food up every now and again and we'd go down to the Antarctic and it was fantastic that was uh, my first stint at sea and uh, after that I got jobs on uh, oil tankers and uh, uh, rig tenders and uh, many other types of vessels, government vessels. I got a job on a um, customs patrol vessel, uh, border patrol, uh, that went round Australia, uh, keeping the borders safe, trying to stop uh, illegal immigrants uh, from coming over on boats. And I did that for a couple of years. Uh, eventually, uh, I retired uh, because uh, when you're 65 and working at sea um, they're not keen on employing you because if you have a medical problem while you're on board a ship it's very hard to get you off you've got to medivac you off or take the ship into support that could be days away and uses all that fuel just to get a sick person off so they tend not to want to employ older people just after i retired um, that's when uh, probably the, the biggest problem in my life ever happened and the worst thing that ever happened to me. Um, my wife told me that she no longer wanted to be married to me and uh, I thought that would pass. I thought, you know, it's probably just a, a phase. Um, she'd rethink it. So I went back to the USA. I'd, uh, I'd worked on cruise ships out of the USA and I'd bought a, a condo over there in Tampa and uh, I went back to there and um, stayed there for three months in being in constant contact with my wife and uh, I thought okay when I go back everything should be all right we should be okay but it wasn't uh, I got back and she said no she wanted to, to be alone so that's when I had to make a decision I was deciding on where to go I looked at a few places uh, while I was in the US I looked at Jamaica again but that was very lawless I looked at uh, um, Belize because a lot of retirees from the US go there but I didn't like that very much. I looked at Costa Rica and I didn't. It was nice but it wasn't for me. I've been to Thailand many times before and I always had an idea that that would be the place where I personally I would like to, to retire to. So that's what happened uh, when I knew there was no chance for me and my wife getting back together. I moved to Thailand. So can you tell me a little bit more about the life that you have uh, in Thailand? When I, when I came to Thailand, I found it hard to get a retirement visa. It was not an easy thing to do in Thailand. Uh, so I wrote a book, uh, the Retire in Thailand Handbook, the first six months. And it was published by Austin McCauley in 2018. I found I enjoyed writing, so I wrote a biography. Then I wrote four more travel books. Uh, about uh, retiring in different countries and uh, then I wrote uh, The Deptford Mass Murders which is um, a true story uh, of uh, the first time fingerprints were ever used uh, to convict someone in uh, a capital murder. It was a true story but uh, it was my take on it because no one really knew what was happening back in 1905. I then wrote a couple of fiction books uh, about Thailand, uh, Murder in Paradise uh, and Bar Girl in the Thai Died series of books featuring Chai Son Sinuan, an incorruptible policeman on the island of Koh Samui in a police force that's rife with corruption. 
The last book I wrote was Adolf Hitler, uh, not Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, about a young boy growing up in Middlesbrough in the 1950s in a racist family who was fast becoming a racist himself and how he changed his view on life when an immigrant family from Jamaica with two kids moving next door to him. Uh, I based the book on uh, my life growing up in Middlesbrough during uh, that time when they had the infamous race riots in Cannon Street area of town and we were living in the Cannon Street area of town so I saw a lot of that. I was never a racist myself, never have been, never will be. Uh, I've worked in so many different countries with so many different people and from nationalities and colours and creeds that uh, that's the last thing uh, I'm, I am is a racist. I love everyone from any country as long as they're good people and there's good and bad in every country. Anyway, after writing all those books, um, I found that I was spending too much time indoors. I hadn't come uh, all this way to Thailand to sit indoors at a computer typing away at writing books uh, from morning till night when the beautiful weather was outside. So I um, thought I've got to do something else. I need to do something. I can't just come here and sit on a beach and do nothing uh, for the rest of my life. I knew I had to have something uh, to get up in the morning for. Uh, so I decided to, to try to do a YouTube channel and that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, you've been here for close to six years now. Uh, where have you lived in Thailand? Well, I've lived in uh, many places. I've traveled the length and breadth and spent time in all of the main towns, uh, especially uh, the beach uh, towns and islands such as uh, Phuket, Koh Samui, Wahin, uh, I'm currently living in Wahin uh, and that's uh, probably where I'm going to stay for a little while at least. And uh, where are your favourite places in Thailand? Well I suppose Koh Samui would be the, uh, the most favourite place of mine. Uh, the only thing that as the downside for it is that it's a long way from everywhere else and it's an island and it's hard to get on and off. I like all the islands, uh, Koh Phangan, Koh Lippi, Koh Samet. Uh, I love Wahin. It's a big town but not too big uh, and got beautiful surrounding areas like this. This is only an hour and 15 minutes away from uh, Wahin and uh, it's a different world completely. I like uh, Chiang Mai but the only problem about Chiang Mai is it hasn't got a beach and I need to live where there's a beach or there's, where there's the sea. I love Krabi, uh, but that's a little bit expensive. And I love uh, Kon Ken, which is in the uh, north-east of Thailand. And uh, I love living there. I uh, spent quite a bit of time there. But the same problem with that nearest beach is about a seven hour drive away. So is there anywhere in Thailand that you don't like? I've only found uh, one place that I wouldn't say I don't like, but I couldn't live there, and that's Bangkok. And it's not that I couldn't live there because it's a bad city. I couldn't live in London. Uh, I lived in Sydney for a while and that drove me crazy. I only like living in small beach towns um, or mid-sized beach towns. I don't like big cities. I don't like being surrounded by millions of people. I don't like the traffic and the pollution that goes with it. Uh, so that's the only place I've found in Thailand that I could actually say, look, I don't like it here. I, I, I couldn't live here. That's the only place, Bangkok. What about the things that you like and don't like about living here in Thailand? Likes. Well, let's go with the dislikes first. I dislike uh, the driving here, as you can see why. Uh, it's very dangerous and uh, it's very confusing. Uh, so I, I dislike driving, but it's something you've got to do. If you're gonna live here, you've got to get from A to B. A lot of expats don't, they just get taxis, uh, but taxis and motorbike taxis can have accidents just the same. I sometimes feel better that uh, I'm driving, at least I know my capabilities. When I get into a taxi, I don't know if he's on Yaba, or if he's been driving for 12 hours straight without a break and uh, it might fall asleep at the wheel. So um, I prefer uh, to do my own driving. Corruption, uh, I dislike corruption. Uh, it's quite corrupt here. 
uh, with the police force and uh, also some government officials. So it's not um, like the countries I'm used to, to living in. I'm sure there's corruption in Australia and there is in England and the USA, but it's not uh, as in the open as it is here. The weak judicial system. Um, it's two laws, it's two judicial systems. If, if you're rich, there's one law for you. If you're poor, there's another law for you. So it's like high so, low so. Um, if you're high so, you probably can get away with just about anything. You can kill someone on the road and you'll probably get a slap on the wrist. Just have to pay uh, compensation, but you won't do any jail time. But if you're low so and you do that, you're gonna end up uh, in jail. Uh, so the yeah the judicial system is not fantastic here um, dual pricing that's another thing I don't like uh, I can go to a national park with my girlfriend and uh, she can go in for free but because I'm Farang I have to pay and uh, that's not just that it's like many things uh, dual pricing I mean I can go to the dentist and uh, it'll be one price for uh, an expat and another price for a Thai person and it's seen all the way through uh, Thailand it's in a lot of things that you do I always try and get a, a Thai person to go in with me because it does make it a lot easier or go and get a price first uh, because they'll give them the Thai price not the Farang price so that's another thing I don't like uh, government protocol um, what I said before about uh, getting a a visa here it's very hard it's not an easy thing to do and then to keep it you've got to jump through hoops to keep that visa not like when I was in Australia I got the visa for life that's it it's, I don't have to worry about it I just got it I can come and go now as I please but in Thailand every three months you've got to go and uh, do a 90-day report and you you can only renew your visa for one year so it's never that you think oh you know I can renew for 10 years and just forget about it and also you can't buy land here um, and I don't think that's a bad thing when I look at uh, Europe uh, the UK USA Australia uh, places I've lived um, people can just come into that country and buy up the land and buy up uh, you know businesses and, and just um, take over um, when it's not even their country that's one good thing about the Thais they're keeping Thailand for Thai people um, it's the same with immigration. Uh, it's, I don't like it, but I'm, I'm pleased about it in one way because I've seen what's happening in the USA with millions of people coming across the borders. I've seen what's happened in the, in the UK with uh, millions of, uh, or tens of thousands, I should say, coming across uh, in boats uh, every year from places like Albania, um, of all places, as well as places in the Middle East. But, uh, it's just open slather and they don't turn them back, uh, they just let them stay. Where here, if you're found as an illegal immigrant, you're deported. You could even do time in prison. So it is uh, a good thing in one way. It does annoy me, but I, I'd rather it this way than uh, how I see things in uh, some other countries in the world. Another thing I dislike is pollution uh, here. Uh, it's such a beautiful country and uh, they don't treat their country very good at all uh, with both air pollution water pollution with plastic bags and all sorts of things i did a video not so long ago about that uh, about the pollution problem here so that's a sticking point that i don't like i don't like uh, all the soy dogs i love the little dogs don't get me wrong i don't feel bad about them in fact i feed them but i feel sad that they live on the street and they have to dig in bins to eat and I think the best thing would be culling. I think it'd be best, that's what happens in places like Australia, the UK. They have vans that go around and if they see a stray dog, they pick them up and they put them in a shelter for about a month, I think. And uh, if no one claims them, then uh, they're put down. Very sad for the dog. But um, I've seen many times here where young kids have been mauled um, and, and adults as well, but it's worse when it's young kids, you know, they're only little and, um, you know, they're bitten uh, and have to end up in hospital some have died uh, because they've been attacked by soy dogs so soy dogs is a, 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 a bad thing here and also uh, when we're on the subject of animals elephants shows I, I don't like them I like uh, the elephant sanctuaries where they are kept and fed and looked after but when it's an elephant show when you're carrying people around on their backs and uh, 
uh, you know, doing tricks, standing on their hind legs and things like that. I don't like that. And the same as the monkey shows. I don't think uh, wild animals should be uh, an attraction where people pay to go and see them do tricks. So, the likes, well, uh, there's many of those. Well, I'll, I'll uh, just uh, cut them down. I won't go through everything I like here, but the cost of living obviously is a big factor here, and it's a reason why I'm living here. So the cost of living, that's what I like. I can uh, live a great life here on a fraction of what it costs me if I lived in Australia. I love the weather, uh, as you can see. Uh, it's like this, I would say, 75% of the year. Uh, the other 25% of the year, some of that is wet season. But I like that too. I like it when uh, we get some heavy rain. It gives me a reason to stay home and do something different and not have to go out. So I do like uh, the wet season. Uh, I love the beautiful beaches and the tropical islands. Who wouldn't? Um, they're everywhere, you know, you, uh, and except Chiang Mai. Uh, but they're everywhere down south, put it that way. Uh, you know, once you reach Bangkok and you, you keep going south, there's beautiful beaches and beautiful islands uh, everywhere. You, you know, if I go gone, I couldn't see them all uh, in my lifetime. I love the people. I love the Thai people. Uh, I get to know as many Thai people as I can. And uh, I think it's part and parcel of living somewhere. If you're gonna come and live in a, another country, I think you should uh, get to know the locals and try and integrate as best as you can. Um, and you'll get more out of it yourself by doing that. Um, you'll find, uh, you'll enjoy your life better uh, if you've got some Thai friends. I love the uh, patriotism uh, that Thais have. I look back at uh, um, my country where they're tearing down statues of people like Winston Churchill and. Uh, many people, they're now considered racist, I, and I, I don't know, I mean, but I just think, you know, that was then, this is now, uh, that's what happens here. I'm sure they've had racism here as well, but they don't tear statues down. Uh, they're very patriotic here. Another thing uh, I like is the low crime. Uh, I put that down to Buddhists, uh, their religion. They want to come back in the next life as uh, uh, a rich person or a better person, so they try and do the best they can in this life. So um, crime is very low here uh, compared to most Western countries. Um, I've lived here six years, I've never had a crime committed against me, I've never felt threatened. I go to ATMs on a night and uh, don't feel as if someone's gonna come behind me and uh, steal my money. Uh, I feel very safe here, so that's another thing I like is the low crime uh, in the country. Do you have any advice for anyone who may be thinking of coming here to live or retire? Well, advice, the only advice I'll give you is research, research, research and then do more research. Did I mention that uh, I wrote a book, uh, the Retiring Thailand Handbook? Uh, look at that, that'll give you uh, a lot of research. You need to check uh, government guidelines all the time checking and double checking the guidelines uh, for coming here for getting visas and everything else that you want to do here uh, just uh, keep checking all the time so that uh, you're not surprised uh, if they change the protocol another thing be careful of when you come here is the Thai ladies uh, especially the bar girls now don't get me wrong lovely girls bar girls I know lots of them and uh, Many men have married and uh, been very happy with it, marrying a bar girl or taking a bar girl as a partner. But mostly that doesn't happen. Uh, it does happen, but very rarely. And uh, the Thai lady is after a better life. And that's why you see them with old Farang like me. Uh, you know, if, if, if not, they'd be looking for young men. They're looking for old men. They know that... They, <laughs> I know it sounds horrible, but they know they're going to die soon uh, or sooner than uh, getting in a relationship with a 20 year old uh, boy from the USA or the UK. Um, so that means their financial future is secure. Also be careful because when you take a Thai girlfriend, and this is not about bar girls, it's any Thai girlfriend, you do inherit their family. 
So if she has three kids at school uh, from a previous relationship, you'll be expected to uh, take on that responsibility if the father has reneged on that responsibility, which uh, most times Thai fathers do. Uh, they tend to walk away and forget about their children. So that's another thing. If you're going to get into a Thai relationship, make sure that you're willing to take that on or make sure that she doesn't have any children or have any family and then you're not taking on that that uh, so much another thing i'd said which i said before make thai friends don't just mix with expats and careful not to get into the bar scene i see a lot of uh, expat retirees they come over here and they're lonely and they're a bit sad they've left their own country and they tend to want to go and mix with people from their own country and uh, a lot of them end up in bars and I see them all the time. I go driving uh, around Wahin, uh, driving past bars at 10 o'clock in the morning and you see Farang sitting there uh, chatting away uh, to their other Farang friends. And to me, it's why would you come all this way? Why not just stay in the UK, Australia? If you want to sit in a bar and talk to Australians or British. Um, I came here to get a life and to enjoy my life, uh, not sit in a bar. Don't get me wrong, I love a drink, but I don't want to sit in a bar all day. So be careful you don't get into that scene. It, it, it does happen a lot where people do that. Another thing, uh, look at my YouTube channel, go back through all those videos because um, there's a lot of useful information there if you're planning on coming here. Uh, there's two years worth of videos there. And I think it's a couple of hundred videos. So, you know, pick through some of them, which uh, some of the towns you might be thinking of uh, going to, and uh, you'll find some videos there. Uh, also, uh, look at channels like um, Paddy Doyle. He's very, very good, young man, uh, but very good on uh, travel videos. And uh, Retired Working For You, Chris from Retired Working For You. He's very, very good. And he should be, I think he worked in Hollywood, uh, in films, so um, he's very good at uh, doing the videos. Uh, I wish I was as good as him, I'd, uh, I'd love to be able to put videos together like, uh, well, like both of them, like Paddy Doyle and him. And avoid the cheesy ones, avoid the ones that just bull Thailand up to be uh, the greatest place on earth. It is a fantastic country, but a lot of them are cheesy and uh, they're just trying to uh, sell a holiday rather than uh, living somewhere rather than retirement and uh, you need to pick through them carefully because uh, it does show you everything uh, as being uh, uh, good and great about Thailand but it's not it's the same as in any country not everything is good here so uh, yeah look for some good YouTube channels uh, and sort through the bad ones and get as much information as you can before you come here from them. They're a good source of uh, finding out about Thailand. And last, and this is a, uh, always a bone of contention with me, wear a helmet at all times if you come here. When you come here, don't look around and think, oh, Thais aren't wearing them, and look, this Farang's not wearing one, and this Farang's not wearing one, and look at this one, he's got three people on a motorbike, and none of them are wearing a helmet wear a helmet um, if i hadn't been wearing a helmet when i had an accident in phuket i wouldn't be here now i'd be dead um, because i was unconscious where it where my head hit a wall and that was wearing a helmet and can you imagine if my head had hit that wall not wearing a helmet i'd either be brain dead or I'd be dead so wear a helmet don't think that oh i don't have to the police won't pull me up they don't most of the time they don't and you think you're never going to have a, an accident. Well, I thought that too. And I've had two bad accidents here. So wear a helmet at all times. So what have you got planned uh, for the rest of your life? And uh, what's next for your YouTube channel? So I wrote uh, the Retire in Thailand Handbook the first six months in 2017 when I first got here. And it was published by Austin Macaulay in 2018. Well, a lot changed since then. Um, it's been six years, believe it or not. Uh, so what I've done, I've uh, written a new book uh, called The Retiring Thailand Handbook 2023, the next six years. Uh, so that covers the last six years of me living here. The first book uh, was the first six months, and this one is the uh, last six years of, of living here. Um, 
many things have changed over the last six years uh, a lot of it's due to covid uh, not just thailand a lot of countries have uh, had their economies ruined but uh, thailand uh, felt it very very hard especially the low so people of thailand the, the workers uh, they found it very hard especially the ones who relied on tourism because tourism virtually stopped but i have noticed recently uh, over the last three months that thailand is coming back as a tourist destination and uh, a lot of the places are full uh, phuket i've seen uh, on, uh, on the internet that it's uh, booming as is koh samui um, i'll be heading down that way soon i hope um, but yeah thailand is getting its mojo back nothing like it was in 2019 when 40 million tourists came here but it's getting there it's improving so that's another thing for the future is uh, I've got my new book out. This broken collarbone is uh, holding me back uh, a little bit with uh, doing content for the channel and it's frustrating because uh, it's uh, been two years since I started doing the channel and I thought it was starting to pick up a little bit uh, with uh, the amount of subscribers uh, but I'm really not sure about the future of Thailand Myland retiring disgracefully at the moment. I'm really not getting enough views uh, when I uh, release a video. I'm only getting two, three, four, five hundred people viewing it, uh, which is nothing uh, when you've got some YouTubers getting 25, 30,000 views. And I'm not comparing myself to them, I'm just uh, stating the fact that it really isn't enough uh, for me perhaps to keep going if I'm only going to be able to get two or three hundred people watching my videos. I've also only got about two and a half thousand subscribers which isn't enough uh, either. A lot of people as I say they've got 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 subscribers and uh, they're making uh, uh, money out of it. Um, now I knew that I was never going to make money from this I hoped I'd make a little bit enough to cover expenses for camera equipment and for perhaps petrol and stuff like that. I was hoping that perhaps I'd get a little bit, but uh, it's not working out that way and it's quite frustrating uh, to spend a lot of time coming places like this, doing a video and not getting uh, uh, a lot of people who, who are getting something out of it. And uh, as I say, I'm not blaming anyone and I'm not saying that uh, everyone should go and watch my channel. Obviously, it's not for everyone. Uh, not many people uh, are, are getting enough out of it to uh, subscribe or to view my channel regularly. So that's uh, something I have to put a lot of thought into. I see uh, many great YouTubers uh, in Thailand, uh, like Paddy Doyle and uh, Retired Working For You. You know, they get tens and tens of thousands of people watching every time they put a video out. And they also get tens of thousands, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 subscribers, uh, which makes them uh, uh, monetized on YouTube. They make a lot of money from it, and uh, it's a business for them. I never thought it would be a business for me. I always thought that perhaps I could uh, pay my way as I'm traveling around Thailand and doing videos that it would help me pay for the accommodation or pay for petrol. Uh, but it's not happening, so that's what I have to do. Um, I've seen some pretty ordinary YouTubers, which I consider ordinary. And in fact, I I just look at them and I shake my head. I think, you know, how how can you um, get so many um, subscribers? Uh, but obviously, they they are appealing to a bigger audience. Uh, I'm probably appealing to a smaller audience uh, in aiming more for retirees. So I. I'm never going to get uh, some of the uh, subscriptions like some of the bigger YouTubers get. So that's what I have to do. I'm going to take a hard look at uh, uh, what to do next. My problem is, is that I can't just sit around and this YouTube is fantastic for me uh, because it makes me get out and get about and go different places and it keeps me young and it keeps me fit and it keeps me healthy. So um, I love doing it, but I don't want to do it if I'm only going to get 200 people look at it uh, because it's frustrating and it's demoralizing, you know, I, I just don't want to do it. So I'm going to have to think, I'm going to, once again, do, what do I do about the channel? Do I try and 
uh, get more subscribers by going and doing thing videos that uh, other people are looking for um, rather than just aiming to the retiree market so that's uh, my plans for the future thanks very much Jed for the informative interview as usual it's been great talking to you my pleasure thanks very much for taking the time to interview me we should get together and do this more often if you haven't already done so, please push the subscribe button. If you're thinking of retiring or living in Thailand, please take a look at my book, The Retire in Thailand Handbook, the first six months. You'll find it on Amazon. It's crammed full of information to help you tiptoe the logistics of making Thailand your home in retirement. Thanks a lot for watching my channel. So until next time, stay safe, keep smiling, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.